Okay, hello everyone. Uh, let's get started. So today we continue talking about AWS uh, Cloud Platform and that's uh, what you see once you have registered your uh, AWS free account. So once you log in, you are in AWS Management Console. So basically uh, the main entry point for uh, using AWS resources. Yeah. So let's get started. So as it was uh, promised uh, last time, so we will start from securing our a root account, so the account uh, which we used to register. Yeah. So uh, in the later videos, we will cover that we can have uh, multiple users attached to the same account. Yeah? But uh, right now, uh, let's do some security-related things. So let's. Uh, so here in Find Services, just type AIM, Identity and Access Management. Go there, and here we go. Uh, so uh, here, basically, we see security status, and we can see that uh, there are some basic things according to best practices, which uh, we would need to uh, follow, right? So right now, we only uh, have deleted our root access key. So basically we don't have them at all. So they are not generated and we need to go through four additional things, yeah, which will be covered uh, during during this video. Uh, so first of all, activate MFA, so multi-factor authentication. Yeah, so meaning that we add an additional layer of security. Yeah, so meaning that it is not enough to know only our email and password to be able to log in, but we need to provide something else, right? Activate MFA. Yeah. And here we have a choice. So basically, uh, when we talk about MFA device, there is a virtual or hardware device on which uh, a temporary code or password will be generated each time you will try to log in and you will need to enter this code in addition to your uh, primary password to be able to get in. Yeah, so that's just an additional layer of security. Yeah? So we have multiple choices. Yeah? So we can have some hardware devices or preferably we can use a virtual one. So basically it means that we need to uh, download uh, an application on our mobile phone. And here you can see a list of applications which are compatible. Uh, which are compatible. Uh, so, and here uh, you can see, depending on which platform you have, whether it's Android or iPhone, you can see a list of applications which can be used. So, myself, I prefer to use uh, Google Authenticator, so you can use any other application you would like. So, first, what you need to do, you need to install any of these applications on your mobile phone. Once it is done, you go here and here you press show code. So, you will uh, be shown a code which should be scanned by the application okay so okay i just have done that and now on my mobile phone i can see i can see some code which is changed every 30 seconds yeah and to be sure that everything works as it should i need to enter two sequential codes here mfa code one so once the code is regenerated i need to enter code two uh, so if two codes will be entered correctly it's assumed that the device has been assigned right so the first one so it's an eight uh, six digit code which is regenerated each uh, 30 seconds right okay so let's wait once uh, 
new code has been generated. Okay, let's wait, still it's not generated. Okay, now I have a new one. Seven, two, three. Okay, assign MFA. So by that I confirm that everything works it should. Yeah, assigned, okay. Okay, and that has been done successfully. Let's go back to dashboard. So as you see, so now we have our MFA device linked in. Yeah, so meaning that it's not enough to know the password. You should also um, you should also be asked to enter a pass uh, not a password but code which is regenerated each 30 seconds. Right. So another thing is that uh, currently we are locked in as a root user, the user uh, under which we created our AWS account and it has all privileges. So it can do virtually anything in our account. Yeah, and that's actually quite dangerous to use this root account for uh, daily stuff. Yeah, so it's recommended by AWS that everything it is done by a newly created user to which you assign some privileges or some permissions yeah and you use only root account then you need to do something uh, which this uh, administrative user cannot do right okay let's do manage users add user okay, let's create it admin user Okay, and here we have two access types. Yeah, so programmatic access, it means that uh, user will not be able to log in into AWS uh, management console, meaning it will not be able to use uh, this graphical interface, but programmatic access stands for using uh, APIs or inside SDK, CLI and so on. Yeah, so basically that's for uh, your applications mainly yeah so of course you can use uh, both access types for your user but it is not highly recommended to do that so because you need to assign only permissions which are indeed you uh, needed yeah so if you create a user to be able to log in into AWS console most probably you will not need programmatic access yeah? okay so uh, let's use a password Okay, let me uh, just type it in. Okay. And yeah, so also we have a choice that once the user uh, logs in for the first time, it will be asked to reset the password. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so uh, about users and groups. So here uh, we have a choice how we assign permissions uh, to our account. So the first thing is that we assign permissions directly to a user. Or another thing is that we assign permissions to a group and uh, also add users to that group. Yeah? So the first uh, approach by assigning users to a group and granting permissions to that group is more preferable because if you have uh, let's say hundreds of users uh, which need uh, the, who need the same uh, permissions yeah so you will need to assign manually to each of these users need permissions yeah so but if you have a group you just add all these users to a group uh, for which you have assigned all needed permissions yeah create a group Okay, group name admin group and here we have administrator access yeah full access to aws services and resources yeah so you might wonder how this uh, full access to aws services and resources uh, differs from root account yeah so the main difference is that um, still this administrator access policy uh, doesn't grant permissions to some uh, billing uh, 
uh, billing related uh, things, yeah, which will be covered a bit later. Okay, so we have added group policies next tags so you can add some tags if you need okay then review admin user okay uh, create user okay okay close and if we go back to dashboard so you can see that now we have created individual user and also groups yeah, so we basically uh, in this go we have covered two things uh, and basically the last one apply an am pal password policy so what is that yeah, so here you can see uh, under account settings we have this set password policy so here we can set some requirements for the passwords uh, which will be used by our users yeah so for example, the minimum length of the password, let's say it's 10. At least one uppercase, lowercase, one number, let's say it's here, enable expiration, so then uh, you should uh, define days after, after uh, which the password will expire and you will need to uh, provide a new one non-alphabetic uh, here you can also set expiration meaning that if the password expired user cannot change it by himself but uh, that will require some administrator intervention huh? allow and prevent password reuse remember five password okay that's fine okay and if we go back to dashboard so now you can see we have uh, covered all five uh, points related to uh, AWS best practices okay so that was a short overview how we can uh, secure our AWS account according to uh, Amazon recommendations and best practices okay so hopefully that was interesting and useful for you and starting from the next video we'll talk about uh, AWS basics we'll talk about uh, regions and availability zones Okay, but that's all for today. Thanks to all for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet to this uh, YouTube channel, I would suggest to do that so you don't miss anything. If you like that video, don't hesitate and just press like. Also, don't forget to visit my website available at uh, dataguru.guide where you can find some interesting articles and stuff related to AWS, uh, big data and Java programming. Uh, Okay, but that's all for today. Thanks to all for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.